and welcome to Word Putting Your Thesis All Together webinar. Today we will cover content to help you put together your full thesis. Um, even if you're at the point of not putting together your full thesis, it's relevant to learn what to expect and we'll be covering some captions. So my name is Candida Spence from the Digital Literacy Training and we will have a look at the outline for today. Um, I won't go through everything in the outline, but you can have a glance of all the cover page that refers to the ANU policy and all the preliminary pages that you'll need. We will insert a chapter one and two that we'll work on creating this first of all, save them. And once we insert them, we'll be able to do a table of contents, list of tables and figures, and while we're doing that, we have a checklist that you can refer to um, that allows you to see if you've done everything as you're putting it together. This is the research essentials of thesis formatting at ANU. We have used a thesis chapter template sample in our previous webinar to maintain consistency in your thesis. We then have used a reference manager. So uh, the ANU library pre presents EndNote or Mendeley webinars. Then we apply captions for your tables, maps, figures, and charts, and we'll be revisiting that today and actually linking it to our chapters. Step number four is just a recommendation as you develop your chapters that you should keep them separate throughout the writing process. Step number five is to bring your thesis together by joining all our chapters together, which we're gonna do today. So we work off of the ANU policy called the Higher Degree for Research Submission and Examination of Thesis. Um, the link will be sent to you after today of where you can find it. I've provided it on the ANU library webpage, but it's a link to the live policy of ANU policy with the number there so that it's always up to date if anything changes throughout the year. I'm actually going to exit the PowerPoint presentation and show you the services page with the policy. You can just watch. You don't need to replicate it if you don't want to um, because you'll have the link to look at later. So I'm just gonna change my sharing around. On this web page, we have the content of today's workshop. We have a link to the sample of full thesis, but it's also on the page you have today. So we do have a little bit of duplication. And once you're finished today, you'll have the manuals, Word, Windows and Mac version to refer back to. So everything I talk about today will be in those two training manuals. So after today's workshop, you could download it because you might not be able to um, have everything open today. Under related links, I do have a link to the procedure. So I'm gonna show you that. And as I mentioned, this takes us, if you look at the web address at the top, it's the ANU official policy. To put together your thesis, we need to scroll down to number 22. The first page of the thesis includes your title, your name, and full month of year of your submission. There is a copyright notice. This was brought into um, the policy about three to five years ago. So if you pull up a previous 
thesis, it may not have the copyright notice and the all rights reserved. So those two lines are new um, in the past few years. Then we have our declaration, number 24. Number 25 is acknowledgments. 28 is your abstract and 29 is the table of contents. As I mentioned at the beginning, we do recommend um, a reference manager software to bring together your bibliography. The bibliography um, doesn't have a standard formatting style. It just refers to, as number 30 says, consistent with the discipline you're studying in. So it's up to you to discuss with your supervisor what the preferred um, format would be for your references. Now we might take a moment to download some of the chapters and images and the full um, thesis we're going to use today. So if everyone could go to um, the computer you're using, some of you might be using two different computers, but the one that you're going to be um, using to do your exercises on to follow me, if you type in the QL .anu.edu.au forward slash training and press enter. So it has to be in your subject line. Don't put it in a Google search. You won't be able to find it. Just type it right in the address line, ql.anu.edu forward slash training and press enter. I'll give everyone a moment to make sure they found that. And the previous workshops, we had used the exercise files above, but for today, we're going to save into a folder of what I recommended earlier in the email. I'm just gonna overlay my screen so you can have a look. On your computer, if you set, have a thesis folder in an appropriate location, and you save the first one called full thesis, chapters one and two, and the images. So looking back at the heading in the middle of the page, full formatted thesis, right click and save that one. Then we'll use the chapter numbering, chapter one, right click and save. Chapter two, right click and save. Then we have three images to insert. So if we could save those three images. Now one recommendation to think about as you do produce your thesis. Today I've just put everything into this thesis folder, all my images. But if you have specific graphics created for you by a uh, professional area, you might want to save them for future use. So it's good to have a subfolder of images so that you can find it. Say you finish your thesis and you go on to write a journal article and you want to have your high quality um, image, it's easy to locate again. So um, a recommendation would be to save um, them fully somewhere you can solely locate them again. So a few features um, we're not gonna have time to do in class today, but we do have in the handout. So I might just demonstrate is going back to my PowerPoint. Different ways you can capture your screenshots of your data. In Windows, you can use print screen and various methods with your Windows key, or you can use a snipping tool. I'm gonna to demonstrate the snipping tool for an example, just for everyone to watch. You don't need to replicate it. And we're going to save an image to insert into a thesis. The Mac is located at the bottom and it has a built-in uh, feature, Command Shift 4, and that'll make a crosshair and you can make your screenshot. So I'm going to demonstrate um, using some graphics that I've created just in Word um, or PowerPoint and we can 
um, use snipping tool to save it as a image to import. And also I will show you how to do um, in Excel. So we might have a look at SmartArt. So SmartArt, you can draw your own um, text boxes, arrows, and then you can use the capture met method to make it a stable image. So what I've seen um, with my work with students over the years is they just create it in Word and leave it as is with arrows and text boxes. But when the document gets sent to a supervisor or to an editor, then it comes back and things have moved and that goes away from what you're trying to um, portray in the image. So it's best to create it even in a separate um, Word file and save it in that images folder I referred to take a um, caption of it and then put it into Word and that way it's locked down. Do remember to remove the feature in Word that underlines spelling and grammar when using this capture methods and I'll show you in a moment what that means. And then we'll go on to Excel. So once again I'm just doing a demonstration. This is a Word document I've created. I'll just zoom in a little bit, a little bit larger. And you can see that what's happened here at the, my text box, I have a spelling mistake, but if you had a word that wasn't um, indicated by spelling, it would still do the same and pl place that red line underneath. So before I make my um, capturing, I don't, I want to um, turn that feature off in Word. Um, in Windows, it's under File, options and the proofing. So I want to untick while I make this, I want to untick my spelling and untick my grammar and say okay. So now that's gone and my word that I wanted to keep as it was even though it was um, correct is now locked in. So what I mentioned earlier is um, if you had an arrow and then you sent the document on to somebody else and it moved around um, and came back like that and then you didn't even realize and you submitted your thesis, um, that's one problem with doing that. So what I recommend is place all your smart art graphics and then we can open our snipping tool. So I'm on a Windows machine and the snipping tools built in. Just got to find my snipping toolbar. There's my snipping toolbar and it says ready to create a new snip. You need to plan where you start and even with the Mac you, when you have a cross, this is a crosshair and I need to ensure that I start further out of my, all of my inclusions and then I draw the arrow area I want and let go. It's now ready to be saved and I want to save it into my thesis folder and if I had that subfolder of um, images, I would put it there. PNG is, actually, is a good method to use for um, images, high quality, or you can use JPEG. So either is sufficient for what you're doing. I'll keep mine as JPEG to match the other ones and say save. So later when we're working with our chapters, I might come back and ins insert that. So that's how the snipping tool works. Um, but back on my PowerPoint, um, we did have a question. Uh, you'll have access to this in Windows. You have a few options there to try. It depends on how your uh, device is set up. The next one to talk about is Excel. <laughs> Excel has a few different ways to bring in your documents that you create in Excel. Um, I prefer the very last one on the list there on the left. 
is to locking an image and I take it from Excel and I paste it as a picture. I'll show you the difference of what happens with your, especially the colorings in your Excel um, chart that may be created. When you bring it into Word, sometimes Word um, chooses a different color scheme for you. So you need to be aware of that and watch what happens with that. So we'll work on that later when we open our chapters. Um, and this, this information about the snipping tool and the chart in Excel is in that handout that you'll have access to after today. So you can always refer back to it when you're replicating it. Next, we're ready to open chapter one. So once again, if anyone hasn't, um, downloaded. You need to actually download and save all these files um, because then they're easier to find when we're ready to put it all together. So once again make sure chapter one, chapter two and word full thesis is saved and along with the images because that way when we do insert we can know what, which folder to find them. So if we open chapter one And we're on chapter one and we're on heading one. So this was the uh, workshop from the previous webinar called Maintaining Consistency in Your Thesis. Um, you've got my email address so you can contact me after today if you wanted to know more about that workshop and how we can, you can get information about the template. So this is heading one and remember background research is heading two. The way we can see that is just along our top on our home tab, heading one and two are highlighted as we go through them. Then our paragraphs are in body text thesis and that's to match the um, ANU policy that it needs to be a sans serif font and either 1.5 spacing or double spaced and this is 1.5 spacing. I've selected mine to be full justified on the right side, but you can choose that to be um, left justified if you want. So now we're ready to, now I'll show you the rest of chapter one. I've got a code happening here, normally it would come up with the page number, so I'll have to have a look at that. Um, chapter one in my header is showing on the one side and then the other side is research context. So we have um, a placeholder in all of our chapters so that when it's put together and the reader is going through 300 pages, they'll know which chapter they're on and what name of the chapter is for easy viewing. Going back up to the top of our document, we want to insert some figures and all of this is in the handout after today's um, session. We want to put it before the word themes. So if we just press enter once before themes and put our cursor in the empty space. We're going to go to our insert tab and in our insert tab on both Windows and Mac, you should see insert picture. This is going to allow us to locate our folder where we saved our images and we want the chart infographic first of all. And we're just going to insert that. It's going to come in quite large. And if we keep it selected, you now have a new toolbar along the top at the far end, 
called picture tools format. So make sure it looks the same as mine. I know if you have your windows side by side, you might have trouble seeing it. So it's next to your view tab if you have EndNote installed and then format. On this format, if you look far, far to the right, you have height and it comes in at 13.55 centimeters. You could just type in seven to change that to seven centimeters and click after the centimeters and either click down in the next field or press enter and it'll lock the, in that seven centimeters. Once it does, it automatically adjusted the width appropriately because when the image was created, um, it was set to a set proportion. So seven by seven is sort of a nice setting. Um, I'm not sure if there's specific requirements in your discipline of what they should be, but it's mainly being consistent throughout and depending on the visibility. So whatever you choose, you have to think of the viewer reading this online. Is it suitable? Is it too large or too small? So still have the image selected and go to our home tab. On the home tab, we just want to select under the middle section to center it. We have our image selected and this is a good time to turn on our caption. So our caption is under our reference tab. The reference tab, if we look at the first few features, we don't want insert citation. We keep going over till you see insert caption. Select insert caption and you'll have a new dialog box. Now yours probably just says figure one um, you'll need, mine's already been set because I've used this computer with numbering before. You, on the Windows, you'll need to click this numbering. On the Mac, you'll have more so on the um, middle, something called numbering and format. So select that on the Mac, but on the Windows you'll have numbering. Then both the Windows and Mac users should now have this feature and you need to tick to include the chapter number. That is if you're going to use this feature. So as soon as I click it, it says it's going to include the numbering along with heading one. And heading one is what I referred to when we first started is chapter one. So it'll be figure 1.1. We'll work on chapter two in a moment so you can see how that uh, flow on effect will work in chapter two and, and onwards. Press OK. And then we're in our heading, caption, sorry, we want to start typing the name. Um, you can see the cursor is very tight to the number one. So start with a space bar. And this one I've called expected income in 2020. As I said, this is a figure label and it's going below the selected item. So when I teach this webinar, I put the figures below and the table captions above. If you create any other new labels for um, other items such as maps, um, plates, or we already have equations in the drop down, but if you want to create anything else, you would select this new label. We won't do it today, but it is in the handout for after today. So the figure, I've typed it up here, expected income in 2020. Once I put it in by pressing okay, you have the ability to um, change it later on. It's not set in stone. You, have, um, you can change it as you go. So everyone press OK. <laughs> I know what I've got. I just need to turn some of my um, coding off on my um, word settings. So I'm just going to pause for a moment and just turn that off.
So Imogen's just looking into the reason it's doing this. Um, I'll be able to fix it during the break. A lot of it's to do with um, EndNote that I just installed on this machine last week um, to do the training. So it's just showing my coding. But anyways, yours, everyone should work. And it'll say figure one, expected income. Oh, you know what it is? It's my EndNote. I've got my... There we go. <laughs> Instant formatting on. There we go. Salt. Next is what we want to look at is the gap that's happening. Um, we have our image, then we have our caption. Our caption's in Arial 10 point. I've just got my um, screen expanded for you, so um, Arial 10 point's correct. Then we have a gap because we have inserted all of our image and our caption in 1.5 spacing of our body text thesis. So the workaround um, that's also in the handout after today is to fix the um, line spacing of your image. So if you go to your home tab and turn on our show hides. We use our show hides a lot when we get into our section breaks later this, this afternoon. So on our home tab, Next to your styles, everyone should see their show hides. See this little paragraph marker? That one is where the line spacing rule is taking place. So I've just put your cursor on that paragraph marker and look at your layout tab. It's taking the 15 point gap of a new paragraph, but we don't want a new paragraph. We only want to change that 15 point to a six point gap six points more suitable. And then we look at our figure caption, put our cursor at the end of 2020, and look at our layout tab. I've set it at six point, which is great when we get to our tables, but for our figure, we need to change that back to 15 point. So that's your routine for figures, is inserting a 15 point gap and press enter after the PT and lock that in. So that way we'll do a few more just to get used to that. And that way you've now got figure 1-1 and a 15 point gap before your paragraph. While I've selected this line, you can see the gray coding. The gray coding is the number based on heading one, so one Point one. You can also use dashes if you prefer. Um, I think this computer was set at full stops. Um, yours might default to dashes. So it's up to you what you prefer. Um, I actually usually use dashes. Next we want to insert another image. So we'll go down to the next page and just let us know if anyone had any problems with inserting a figure. And we have it seven by seven centimeters with the caption down below. In this section of survey, we might just press enter in a paragraph there. And we want to have a look at inserting our greenhouse effect. So once again, we go to our insert tab, picture. Find the greenhouse effect, saved in our thesis folder, and insert. Now this one, um, we're gonna change to the seven centimeters again, so keep it selected. So on your toolbar at the top, next to view and note and picture format, we're just gonna go over to the far right again, and that height, change that to seven centimeters. After the seven centimeters, when we press enter or click away, it turns to seven by seven again, but uh, I know some of the other computers might have different um, numbering, but as long as your height is seven centimeters, the width will account accordingly. Okay. Um, so is that the same problem I had? I went to my EndNote tab, uh, just had a participant who had the same problem I did. On my EndNote tab, I think I had instant formatting 
off and I've turned it on. Let's see if that works. So with this image, we have to um, make it centered on our home tab and center the greenhouse effect. When this image was created, we had to, it has some white space above and below it. So we have the ability to crop it so that we don't have so much and we can have it tighter to our text and tighter to our caption. And that was on the format and we need to go to our crop. So on our picture tools format, there's a crop button next to that's the height where we were. Click that once. And now we have to drag the middle one down. And what that does, it crops away that white space. And then same at the bottom. If you grab the center dot, dot, dash and grab, drag it up, leave some white space because we don't want it too tight, but just minimize it. Um, we still have one participant that's getting an error. Um, this does happen in the training situation. So we'll try with this one to see if the error occurs. Um, I think it was linking to the heading one. So just making sure everyone's using um, the file, looking at the top of my menu, um, chapter one dash chapter numbering to make sure you're using this document and you haven't changed any of the headings. So now once we try this one, we want to go to our reference tab and find insert caption again. So press insert caption and it should default to figure 1-2. And the numbering is already turned on. But if you don't have what I'm seeing, then you can fix it up in numbering. So my numbering is including styles as starting with heading one. So that's the important part. It needs to be heading one or else it would give an error because it would try to link to something else. The title of figure 1-2 is called Greenhouse Effect in, this is a long one just to show you that you can have long ones because this, the, this one does go through and it'll extend. When you do place it in the um, document, you can have it go for quite a few rows because I know in the sciences, a lot of the um, captions will go for quite a few rows. Say okay. And the same thing here, we need to um, go to our paragraph marker after greenhouse effect and go to our layout tab. So we're putting our cursor on this paragraph marker at the end of our image and we're changing it to six point after instead of 15 point because that's too large. And then greenhouse effect, it's coded and at the end, the last paragraph marker, so you just click anywhere on that row, we go up to our layout tab and we make it 15 point and lock that in with enter. So now I have a 15 point gap before my paragraph starts. Okay. 
Okay. So we press save and just checking my document. We might want to insert a table under the section of modeling approach. So we might just break a paragraph and put in a small table. This time we can actually put the caption first. So we go to our reference tab and insert caption. Reference tab, insert caption. And this time change it, the drop down to table. Then you'll find your numbering. And as I said on the Mac, it's under format numbering. We want to include chapter numbering. Chapter starts with style of heading one. And this one's using the hyphen, which is what I wanted to do for my figure. So I'll leave that as hyphen. Say OK. And table 1-1 one -one is a survey of water quality in remote Australia. Press OK. Now when we press enter, we just have that six point gap. So we're actually ready to put in our table. It can be brought in from Excel or it could be um, developed in, in Word right now. So if you go to your insert tab, we're gonna insert a table. We don't have much space, so we'll just do two rows by four columns. Now when that comes in, once again, it's brought in body text thesis. And we have um, on our home tab, we have to change everything to single spacing and zero point before and after. So one of the suggestions, if you're going to be using a lot of tables, is you modify your table caption uh, chapter template that we created in the previous webinar and include that as a, a style. But for today, we'll just quickly um, select all the cells in the table. If you have this four prong, you can click that once or select all the cells. On our home tab, we're just changing the drop down to single spacing. So that's in our home tab and it's same on the Windows and Mac the line and paragraph spacing. Change it to single. However, some people do use 1.115 if they want a little bit of white space around it. So that's single space, but it still has that large gap. Remember our layout tab? We can take that back to zero now because it's not a paragraph. And while we're here, this is also why you would build this into a new style deciding on what font you want. Um, do you want it to be the same as your paragraphs or do you want to take it down to nine or 10 point if it's gonna have a lot of um, text, that's another option to do. Sorry, my layout didn't work, zero point, lock that in. So there's our table. Um, if any of you also missed the other webinar um, called Word Formatting Your Document. Um, I spend a lot of time talking about tables and especially if they uh, extend onto the next page. So once again, you have my email address from today's webinar um, so you can contact me about uh, information about tables. So looking at our chapter, we've inserted tables and figures. Now, they're all coded and linked to the chapter. If you feel you're only going to have five tables throughout your whole thesis and you don't want to have it linked to the chapter, you can just have them sequential. But the only trouble is every chapter you start, it'll always start at one until you do the put it all together 
then it'll flow throughout. So that's why I recommend linking it this way. We just need to check the bottom of this document. If we scroll through, we do have a few extra markers. So if you make sure you have your show hides on, on your home tab and show hide, just need to delete the extra page breaks. To finish a chapter, we probably want to finish about that way so it's ready um, to insert the next chapter afterwards when we're putting it all together. So press save. The next example, if you just want to watch, um, and I'm actually not going to save it, is um, just inserting a few samples that I created earlier. So the first one was that smart art graphic. So everyone's just watching. Same concept we did picture. And I took that smart art and I made it a JPEG. And now it's locked into my document. And um, one thing I did f mention, we use the centimeters, but at any time you can actually use the side to re the corners to readjust. I just don't recommend using the, the middle ones because it um, distorts the proportion. So that was my image I created. I'm just going to show you um, some data I've created in Excel and different ways you can bring that over. So one is if you already have your table created in Excel, you can simply copy and bring it over to Word. You would of course insert your caption to begin with. And then you would paste it. So when you um, paste, you have the different options to keep the source formatting, use the destination style, which brings in that body text thesis of 1.5. You can have it linking to Excel. So if you were in Excel and you changed the quarterly numbers for Paul Jones, it would um, replicate an update in here. But the only thing is that Excel file has to um, get stay together when you have it linking. So the only that's the only problem with linking is you need to keep the live file in the same file folder. You can also have the last one is linking, uh, creating as, as a picture. Keeping text only removes the entire table altogether. So keeping as a picture or keeping source formatting, which is similar to Excel, is what I would recommend. So I'm going to put it as a picture just to show you that. And if it's a picture, I can simply make it larger, especially in Excel when you have small data and then you bring it in. So as, as I resize, it keeps everything how it was in Excel. So that's why I like the picture one. And I know the data is not going to change. The last sample from Excel is the graphic. So in Excel, when I created this graph, you'll notice the purple and green. When I select and copy the entire chart, and I'm going to take it over to my Word document, and I have the options, right click, use destination theme. Well, Word has decided it's going to make it yellow and gray. But if I keep the source formatting and embed the workbook, it's going to be locked in and stay the same. Then once again, we have the link data and the picture. So once again, I'd either select keep source formatting and embed it into the Word document, but you can still, um, when you provide it to somebody and they change the line spacing, it could go um, a bit off. So once again, picture is your safest bet and it has the ability to make it larger and smaller as needed. So those instructions are in the handout after today. 
I'm just going to close and not save because I just added those two images. So everyone, you can save yours. And next we want to do chapter two. So we go back and find chapter two, chapter numbering. Open chapter two. And as I mentioned earlier, this one is heading one where the water quality is. So make sure you don't change that to a different level. It needs to be heading one. Just re uh, revising what we did when we created this, we placed our cursor right here because we can't touch this chapter two, it's locked in. The way we made it chapter two in the previous webinar was on our home tab, this multi-level list numbering drop down was under, we found it under define new multi-level list. So it's already set at chapter two and this is where you have to be careful. Don't adjust where my cursor is. On the Windows machine, you go to more and you change it to two. It's already set, but that's where you would change, would have changed it. On the Mac, uh, yours was in the center, sort of where my mouse is hovering and yours would say start at two at that point. Then it changes it in this um, option here. So just press cancel because it's already set at two and it's heading one. So we're only just going to insert one image here um, and then we'll start putting it all together and looking at our checklist for today. So we'll just insert one image after this first paragraph. Still have your show hides on on your home tab. Show hides so we know where our markers are. Insert picture. We want the carbon cycle and insert. Once again, the carbon cycle was created with a lot of white space and we can crop that. We have our picture tools format tab open and we have our crop. The large dash we drag down and same with the bottom we take our large dash and we drag it up. If we're happy with that we click away. Next we click back on the image once it's been cropped and on our picture format we change it to the seven centimeters. and lock that in. On our home tab, once that's at seven centimeters, this is the example I was looking for before, back to the uh, seven centimeters, it's not going to be a perfect width of seven centimeters, it's eight centimeters, but it's proportion, so everything's okay with that. It's just being consistent with perhaps your height or your width, it depends on how you want to be consistent with your images. So still selecting our image on our home tab, we want to center it. While we have it selected, we're doing our reference tab and we're doing insert caption. Reference tab, insert caption, and we're going back to figure. So you always have to watch this because it remembers the last one you did, which was our table. So now we go back to figure. It's it's number one and it's it knows to link to heading to our heading number one. If yours hasn't remembered this in this new document, you would just go to numbering and turn it on again. So you would find that under the numbering, tick to include and heading one. And mine's gone back to uh, periods. So I'll change it back to hyphen and say okay and okay. Now I've come into here, which is what I want to show you, and I've pressed OK, but that's all right. I can hit spacebar and I can type in here. So you don't need to type in that little dialog box. You can still type in your document. 
but you need to keep it in the style it's in so that it will be brought into your list of figures. And how to tell it's in the correct style, I'll show everyone once we've typed our caption. We'll fix our paragraph marker. So make sure your show hides are on. Go up to carbon cycle to the paragraph marker, home tab. And we want to make this one, sorry, our layout tab. We want to make this one six point after. So figures are always six point after. Then looking at our figure caption, just putting our cursor anywhere on that line. Our layout tab, we're changing that to 16 point, uh, 15 point after. Press enter. And put your cursor on that carbon cycle. So on our home tab, we want to look further at our styles pane. And press save actually while we're here. So we've got chapter two, home tab. And on the windows, we have the dialog box launcher at the corner. On Macs, you'll have a big button called styles pane. Now everyone should see their styles menu. Keeping your cursor anywhere on that remote Australia, now you need to be careful to keep it at caption. Caption style was turned on as soon as we did the reference tab, insert caption. It grabbed the caption style that we defined as being bold and uh, 10 point and centered. Um, so if you prefer to modify your caption, you would do that in all of your documents or you would do it prior to creating your chapters in the, the template. So basically what I wanted to show you, so on the windows, captions um, highlighted in the long list here, but in the Mac, you'll find yours at the top of your styles pane, it'll say current style caption. If you can't see caption, if we just go to our, if you go to your options, and if you have this list here, um, selected styles to show, it's showing all styles. But if yours aren't showing caption, you might be um, one of the other features. So you just always have to change it back to all styles. If you can't see caption or any style you're looking for. So that's where you um, find the coded caption. And when we create our list of tables and figures shortly, it'll pull from that um, numbering. So once again, looking at our headers and footers, at the moment, chapter two starts back at um, page number one, but that will change as we bring it all together. Chapter two for our heading and water quality for our um, heading on the other side. Um, at the end of this afternoon's webinar, I'll have a layout of how it actually sits when it's um, printed in a booklet so you can see how that works. Cleaning up the bottom of the document, we just want to delete those extra page breaks. and backspace, those extra paragraph markers, and there's page four. So we can save and close chapter two. And that was timing to have our break. So I'm just gonna pause the recording and we can close chapter two. If you're still want to return back to our, um, list, we're going to look at the checklist when we come back at 2.05. So if everyone just wants to have a break, I'm just going to pause the recording and we'll come back at 2.05 and look at the checklist and start putting our, together our thesis. All right, I'm looking at the checklist and in a moment we'll open the 
front sections of a thesis, but before combining chapters. Middle of the page is where we find captions, which we've just done. It's good to have them all set up. Complete your spell checking and grammar. Remove all track changes and comments. You are allowed to put together a run through of your full thesis before you're ready to submit. So you could leave the track changes on, but definitely when you're ready to do your final version, I'd recommend removing them all separate from each chapter, save and close. You'll want to finish all of your editing from your supervisors and editors, and then place them all in a folder ready to combine. When you're putting it together because you have to sequentially put one after another, you don't want to be hesitating and locate a incorrect chapter that might have been a version from a few months ago. So it's best to make sure you've placed them all in a final folder ready to put together. So if EndNote was used, you need to go into each of those chapters and unformat your bibliography. So for instance, if your bracket Jones um, was in text, you will unformat and it'll turn into the squiggle brackets and the bibliography at the end will disappear. I'll demonstrate that in a moment on my chapters. You don't need to do that. But for those of you who use Mendeley or Zotero, there's no action required. You simply insert them and they have different ways to update their bibliography and it creates one simple bibliography. bibliography. Then the rest of the checklist is just a reminder of what we're about to do. It's simply word insert text from file and to set up your section breaks. Then we generate our lists and generate our bibliography. So all of these instructions are in the handout that we will, you'll have to refer to. So this is a nice simple checklist just to remind you where to find everything. So I'm just going to open um, my chapters. You don't, you just, you can just watch this section and I'm going to insert a reference from my EndNote library. I'll insert 10. And just insert maybe a second one. So you, you can just watch this example. Where'd you go? Insert. So I now have two references in my chapter one. I save that and just looking at the bottom of the document, I have two very long references that are just some play references I've had um, attached to my EndNote library. Then um, they've just been inserted in the chapter. So of course, when I bring it in and put it all together, I don't want each chapter to have their own bibliography. I want them all to merge together and create one bibliography. So as the handout checklist recommends, we just want to go to our EndNote tab and we want to go to our convert to unformatted citations. And now you can see it's got the squiggle brackets around our references. And at the bottom of the document, there is no longer a separate bibliography. So I would save that and close. And then I might just add one to chapter two so we can um, see how three of them merge together in our bibliography when we all put together our document. So this one I will insert Let's 
sorry, just have to get it right. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. Insert that one. And it's inserted. Then I would convert to unformatted citations, save and close chapter two. So that needs to be done for each chapter um, when you're ready to put them all together. So now if everyone could open the word full thesis. Open word full thesis. And it's up, to, we can, we should leave our show hides on so we can talk about the page breaks required. So I've written this in body text thesis, as you can see from my styles, but I've created this one as 18 point. You will replace your title of your thesis here and decide if you want it larger or smaller. And same with your name, you would remove the square brackets and all the text and I've placed that in Arial 16 point. Month and year, you would also replace with the month and year. This section break, odd page break has to stay at the bottom. So as you alter some people's thesis are a couple of lines long, as you play around with the spacing, all you would do is keep all these at the bottom half of the page and move everything accordingly and always have the section break here. The reason the section break is here is this page has a rule that there's no page number. Then we begin our declaration. I have copied this text from previous thesis that are available um, through the ANU repository and I could actually send some examples of uh, previous students thesis um, with my follow-up email. You can alter that as you need to and just check the policy that you've covered everything. You would place your name in full in month and year. You do not need to scan and insert your signature because you are moving to online submission. The um, milestones that you go through to submit replace that signature requirement. I now have a new section break so that it sits on the next odd page break. And I once again have my instant formatting. There we go. And we'll talk more about the page numbers when we get to the next demonstration where I show you how the layout is. Acknowledgements. And this is where you're allowed to write as much text as you want. It can go onto two pages. There's no limitations here. If your research is supported by this, you need to have the sentence anywhere in acknowledgements, beginning or end or middle. If you're not part of it, just hit delete. And you can hit delete now in this version if you're gonna use this version you know, for the future. We're still in our Roman numeral pages and your abstract will go here. It's all set for you to type if you look at your styles. On the far right, it's set at body text thesis. So you're set to start typing your abstract. Just keep the odd page break um, near the end of your abstract. List of abbreviations, if you don't require it, you would just simply highlight the list of abbreviations and that section break and hit delete and it'll bring up the next page um, ready for you to use. The next page is our table of contents. This is a just a simple list of instructions and we'll delete that when we're ready to update it. So just keep it there for the moment. Then we have our list of tables, our list of figures. Now, if you're gonna have a list of maps, you would simply select everything and copy and insert it. Because this heading is called a title, so it gets populated into our list of table contents. So if you're gonna create a list of maps or a list of photographs, you'll need to have that same title used. So that's why I re recommend you would simply copy and then insert it after and create a list of maps. 
There's our list of figures. And then we're ready to start with chapter one. So we finished our last Roman numeral page. And you can see this one is set to bring in our normal page number one. So now we're ready to delete everything in the um, dash uh, in the markers and keep that paragraph marker there and just be set to go. So that's where we will insert chapter one. On our checklist, we had a mention that we would use insert an object text from file. So I'll give everyone a moment to find it. It's something you probably haven't used much. On the insert tab, looking at symbol and equation and coming back, um, sometimes you don't have the word object and sometimes you just have this imagery, but there is a drop down arrow and text from file. If your screen is really minimized, if I do it with mine, you can see it's minimized so much that it's hidden. So just find it. And when you do that text from file, it'll prompt you to find your chapter. So I need to go back to my thesis folder and I'm ready to find chapter one. And then I press insert. Now we might turn off our styles pane and on our home tab, uh, view tab, sorry, turn on our navigation pane. View tab, navigation pane. On the max, you'll need to press the second icon of a couple little dot, dot, dots um, layered on top of one another and then you'll have your um, headings like I do. Windows users, it comes up by default, but Mac, you still do view navigation pane, but you select um, a symbol of three dots staggered on top of one another. You can see we're at the bottom of our document. And we go back to um, chapter one, just to make sure everything's working okay. So we have our list of figures, odd page break, chapter one. Our figure is all intact and it's page number one. Our heading of chapter one has come through, our table and the rest of our text. So now, we just want to insert chapter two and we need to have a section break and not a page break. If I was to put a page break, then my whole entire document would have chapter one research context as my heading. That's the importance of section breaks. So we put our cursor at the last paragraph marker and on our layout tab, we have a drop down called breaks. So putting our cursor at the end of chapter one, layout, breaks, and we want odd page break. Let's move to the next page and we're ready to insert insert tab and text from file. So we go back to our equation and symbol and work backwards to our object text from file. And now we're ready for chapter two. Locate our chapter two in our thesis folder and insert. Now we have chapter one and chapter two showing on our navigation pane. Something that happens a lot with chapter two in the training environment with these documents, um, it may happen on your 
live files, so it's a good time to practice. Looking at chapter two and we scroll up, do you see page five? Then water quality has an odd page break, so it should be page seven, but it's reverted back to page one. So we want to double click on that page number one to fix it up. So go to page number one, double click, and now you should be in your footer. If it doesn't work, then you need to go to insert footer and edit footer is another way to get to the same place. I'm just going to um, answer a question um, that a Mac user is having. It's um, going back to our insert feature. So just making sure with the Mac that you're not going to object. On the Mac, make sure you're finding text from file. Um, it's, it's also hard for me to judge what's happening um, because the participants items are coming through as an entire text box and image and not real documents. So text from file is what we need to select because object would just insert a, a, a static object that's not movable. So text from file. And then when you find the text from file, it should say Word document as you're inserting it. Okay. Uh, sorry, back to the Mac user's question. On the Mac, um, if you go to your, I did remember this, sorry, because it's different versions. On the Mac users, sometimes if you go to your top menu bar, insert file and files about halfway down, then you'll use that feature instead of using your ribbon toolbar as we are all using. So if I could just get the Mac user to try that. The Mac user has a top menu bar in Word of text and there's an insert, a drop down. And I think it's just the word file. Then you would find chapter one and insert it. And then you would do a page break under, yep. Yeah. So then after the end of chapter one, Sorry, I'm just repeating this for the, the Mac users. At the end of chapter one, you would do a layout break and odd page break. You should see that there, but if you don't, once again, under your top menu of insert, there's a breaks and then the same option of odd page break. So then you should have chapter one, odd page break, and then inserting chapter two with your Mac users, the top menu insert file, what chapter two. So with everyone's back to what we were fixing about the page numbering, water quality, the page number at the bottom corner is page number one. So we double click on that. If it doesn't work or you sometimes it's hard to get access to it. You can always do insert footer drop down edit footer. So either way it'll take you into the footer that's still indicating page one. We need to select the coded number one and now we now have a new toolbar at the top called header and footer tools design and over to our left as I move all the way over there's a page number drop down. All we want to do is format that page number.
And what's happening is it's starting at one. We want it to continue from previous. So when you insert chapter three, it'll remember to do this. So, and say, okay. And now it should be page seven. Close header footer and page five is ending if you you know imagine a book and as I said I'll, I'll show a slideshow in a few moments of how this looks when it's printed that's page five and then chapter two is starting out as page seven on your right hand side and then it's continuing on the next section at the end of chapter two you will insert it's under layout tab break and do an odd page break. Then we're ready to use our styles. So on the home tab, right at the top, you can see title. We're going to put in our um, bibliography. And just because I've, um, on my version, I've got a bibliography, I can generate one. Um, for the rest of you, you can just leave it blank. But on my EndNote tab, I would simply say update citations and bibliography. And it's gone through and imported my three references that are very long <laughs> and um, made my bibliography. The formatting can be adjusted to what you want. It's just come through in this manner and it's imported um, my descriptions, but you can see the point of how a bibliography will sit. So we save that and looking at our navigation pane, everyone should have chapter one, chapter two, bibliography and the subsections. We're now ready to create our table of contents. So on your navigation pane, you can click on table of contents and the um, text is here to remind you what to do. So you could leave it there and delete it afterwards. So I place my cursor, I go to my reference tab. I go to my table of contents, which is on the far left. There's a drop down arrow. Now we don't want the built in ones that come with Microsoft. We want the custom table of contents. Now in today's um, chapters, we have up to four headings. So the built-in ones only stop at heading three, as you can see above. So that's one reason I use it. Also, the formatting's a bit nicer. So change that to four. So what that's doing is it's showing all my headings and up to level four. But this is up to you and how your discipline might have a table of contents. Some people might only have headings one, two, and three show, or even headings one and two, but generally it's, it's everything, so, so four is probably okay. Press okay, and that's come through. Now on the Mac, you need to be careful because as soon as you click on it, it'll take you to that page and you'll have to return. On the Windows, as you can see, you hover over and you actually have to press control click to go to that section. So now we can delete our placeholder um, brackets. And generally I would have the declaration right under the table contents, but some people might prefer a gap. It's up to you, whichever you do for all the preliminary pages, just be consistent. Um, but the table contents already has a gap after it. Then looking at our list of tables, we just want to also follow the instructions on the reference tab. But this time we're going to the reference tab, but we're going over to the right. Do you remember where insert caption was? 
just above it is insert table of figures. Now, if you don't have it for any reason, and this might be more for the Mac users with older versions, you would once again go to your insert tab and insert um, something called lists and then you would find um, lists of tables and figures. For the rest of us, we would click this insert table of figures and we're in our tables. So we need to change this drop down. On the windows, it's located down to the bottom of this dialog box. On the Mac, it's just um, near the top or middle. Select table and say OK. We only had one table, so that is correct, and it's on page two. So we can delete the text above, keep our odd page break, and then we go down and do our list of figures. So we go to the same reference tab. Next to our caption, insert table of figures. And next we change it to figure. So if you had a list of maps or photographs, the same um, would live in this drop down box for you to create the list of maps. Say OK. This time we have a few more. And then we can delete. Now, if any of your um, titles change, they shouldn't because you finished your um, documents before you brought them all together. You would simply, um, just to make it easier, I always go to the page numbers at the end of the row, especially with the Macs because they're sensitive and jump to the page, and right click and update field. So if you had changed a figure to something else, you would have to manually update every, all the different ones, or if something moved on a, to a different page, you would do right click, update field, entire table, or just page number. So it's always safer to do entire table and press OK. Looking back up at our list of tables, same thing. It's all coded, so we go to the page number, right click, and update field. Same with our table of contents. It's coded, so we would go to the end of Roman numeral three, right click and update field. So that's how you update as you cha make changes throughout your full document. If pages change, you would go to the and update table. They are also located on your reference tab. If you look at the top, left, update tables there, and table figures is over on the other side, update table, but it's not highlighted because I'm not actually in any of my list of tables or list of figures. So you have to be activate, active in it, and that's why it's just easier to right click. So we've got our title page, our declaration, and our chapters, and our bibliography. So everything, including our bibliography, is showing in our table of contents. What I might show is um, a PowerPoint of how it looks when it's bound in a um, book for your version. So I'm just going to do a new share and go over to my, let's see if it's still open. No, I just need to stop the share. PowerPoint, go back, and share, and just do slideshow so you can see the full version. So this is with the clear copy and just done a comb binding for, for your own purposes. Um, when you are done, you can send it off for cloth binding, but um, the requirement and the ANU library, so sorry, the examiner's version and the final version to the ANU only requires um, online PDF, but everyone still likes to have their own 
copy, so I still teach um, how that would work. Then um, I put at the bottom here, no page number on the title page, and that's already set up for you, but as you said, you, you'll have access to watch this again, so you'll have that. Then on the next page, that's why um, we do those odd page breaks. The declaration then sits on Roman numeral three, and there's no page number on Roman numeral two. So if you pull up older copies of thesis, um, this is generally how they're done, um, and Roman numeral three. Acknowledgements, no page number on the left side and page numbers on that side. Abstract will be inserted here. List of abbreviations. The table of contents. The table of contents um, can also flow to the back side. So when it does, it would flow through to the left side and then the page number will appear uh, once there's actually text there. So it's all set up and, and ready to work as it, as it comes together. There's our list of figures, and if we had any other lists, they would be here. This is our last Roman numeral page, and then we inserted our chapter one, and all of our chapters also begin on the odd page. So page one, there's our headers and footers, uh, sorry, our headers of chapter one and research context. And that's how it looks when it's laid out in paper version, printed double-sided. Then water quality begins on page seven because there's no page number on the back side. If chapter one finished there, there would be a page number, but it just by default fell, fell to the other page. And then chapter two, at the top left says chapter two at the line and water quality on the right hand side of page nine, so page eight and nine there. So that's how you manage the layout of putting your full thesis together based on the requirements um, of the ANU policy. And we've got our Word version. here and that was all the content I had for today. So I'm just going to stop recording and um, I know some people have to run off but if you have any questions I can answer them on chat.